Hi there, welcome back to Torment, Tides of Numenera. We're in the underbelly and we're just looking for the strange case of uh, a sorrow's prey. And what is that? The grisly crime scene is blocked by Fulsum and his thugs. We've heard of Fulsum. He seems to run this place. He seems to run the underbelly. So... Hmm. Hmm. Let's talk to him, maybe. Hey there, Mr. Fulsum. This man towers over you, enormously fat and draped in gaudy robes. His expression is calm, stern even, as he regards the bloody mess spread across the floor and wall. The hooded figures on either side of him tense as you approach. He turns to inspect you, eyebrow lifted, and raises his hand. His bodyguards relax, watching you. In the space of a second, his eyes flick over you. He nods, apparently to himself, as if your presence has confirmed something he expected. Scanth holds one of the cast of godlings. That explains the missing pieces. What are you doing in the underbelly? Falling star? Oh, you seem to know much, right? How do you know who I am? An odd question, he says, frowning. You fell from the sky like a comet and somehow survived. My people have been watching you since you set foot on the beach. He cocks his head. Now that I have answered your question, answer mine. What are you doing down here? I'm looking for someone. Are you? He says, I know everyone in the underbelly, and I'm seeking someone as well. Perhaps we can help each other? I'll remember that. He turns his back on you, staring down at the vast pool of blood. This is all that remains of Weedle, one of my protégés. I had hopes for him, now they will never be realized. The underbelly is poorer without him. The rage beneath, beneath his voice cuts each word shorter and shorter. Bring me any information you find. Help me discover the ident identity of his killer, and you will be rewarded. <sighs> he exhales sharply, then turns around. The fury you glimpsed in him is buried once more. I'll remember that. There is an assassin named Matkina, Folsom says. She is known as the White Death. I have helped her find work in the past, but she has become erratic. If she is not involved, she might know who is. If you wish to help in this matter, ask her what she knows. The creature named Mapper may know where she is. Right, ending, ending deaths is something we find good, but... Hmm. Can we promise? Yeah, let's promise. That's, that's, that's a good goal. And we want to find Matkina, so... That's going along. You can count on me, man. I hope so, he says. Trustworthy allies are in short supply. Now we can ask him about something more. Do you have any ideas about the killer's motive to, to kill your protege? I have suspicions, he says, a muscle on his cheek twitching, and I have enemies. It takes no imagination to conclude that this was meant to hurt me. He shakes his head. The killer did not slit Weedle's throat and leave him for me to find. No, they spilled a notion of his blood and scrawled nonsense on the walls. This is a message for me, I cannot interpret it. Scan thoughts, it suggests the killer is crazy, but which of my enemies are insane? Ah, do you live in the underbelly? Not quite, he smiles like he's paying for it by the millimeter. I rarely sleep, so I need no bed of my own, but I have spent most of my life in these tunnels and grottoes. It is a good place, cruel and unforgiving, but good. His slow gaze sweeps over the underbelly. Sagas foolishly sense its undesirables here, as if it is worthless, but the underbelly is a place of hidden treasures. Wise machines and kind mutants if I had a home here, I would not regret it. Hmm. 
Folsom seems like a strange name for you. Yes, the big man says, the name was a gift, and somewhat of a witticism from my departed mentor many years ago. Before long, the name was the only one I was known by. Scanthor's a true gift in the light of the unfortunate nature of my given name. Well, we have to find out, probably, what it, his given name was. Well, and if you want me to help, I want to examine the murder scene behind you. At first, Folsom doesn't respond. He merely stares down at you, through you. I will not have you trample through this blood without cause, he says at least, so there had better be one. Scanthos, I don't need your help that badly, godling. Well, um... The murderer, let's go logical way, we're, we're logical, may have left behind evidence. I won't know unless you let me look. Casts a doubtful glance behind him, pauses, then nods. Let her pass when she's ready, he tells the hooded figure at, at his side. They incline their heads. Um, farewell and thank you. Can we pass, Mr. Thug? Try not to step in the blood, eh? Sure. All right, all right. Now, what is this symbol here? And bam! <laughs> the blood. Not much remains of Fulsome's former protege beyond a vast, still pool of blood with a skinned hand at its center. A bloody circle is scrawled on the wall nearby. We'll inspect the hand in the pool of blood. A flayed hand with long, slender fingers lies palm up in the center of the pool of blood. The rest of the victim is missing. Making a note. Will you step away? Inspect again. The fingers of the skinned hand at the center of the pool have curled slightly, but the scene is otherwise unchanged. They have curled. Again. Oh my god, it's moving. We'll examine the bloody circle on the wall. It is immediately clear that the dashes and bleeding pinpricks decorating this circle are not random. This is a symbol, drawn with careful intent. Unfortunately, it means nothing to you. Before you can look away from the circle, a memory bulges painfully through your thoughts. And the memory isn't yours. We'll surrender to the memory no matter how much it hurts. Fresh blood streams over the circle yanking you through the hollow at its center into the world beyond. A strip of blistered land coils through a, a void as black as a gaping mouth. The air is thick, foul and textured, with a slickness of maggots. Nausea slams into you, filling your head, infecting your thoughts. You shove the horrific memory away from you, slamming your mind shut like a door and swallowing the knot of nausea in your throat. After seeing that world, the bloody pool at your feet seems almost mundane. Let's examine the, the circle again. The array of circles and lines blur the longer you stare at them. Their arrangement still means nothing to you. Ah, And the hand, does it mean something new? No. Let's leave. Whoa, well, I guess we we have to... Well, let's talk to Fulsam again, maybe... There's something new? No. All right, you can do this. There's a child, what does the child know? Does it know something? Did you see all the blood over here? Someone must have killed a hundred people. Learning begets do it. Hmm. Or is it the let's other? ask these paranoids. Maybe they know more. I see things, you know, I have special eyes. Oh my god. You know too, don't you? You smell the corruption. Yes, the jagged dream is down here too. The jagged dream won't rest till Sagus is drowning in blood. Someone killed Fulsom's apprentice. I told them war was coming and they laughed. Do you see them too? Do you see the hooded strangers, the nameless servants of the council? 
Weedle is only the first, mark my words. He's not the only one I've seen with a hooded shadow. This is you trying? Well, I never promised success. Peered into one of those hoods once, I saw the twisted flesh, the gaping toothless mouths. They want us doubting each other and starting fights. They smirk behind their sleeves when we die. They'll take me one day. They know where I am. I've heard things, you know, things I shouldn't. I had to run. I had to leave everything behind. They'll take me one day. The dragged dream is looking for me. Have no doubt. One day I'll just disappear. All right, we, we now know everything paranoid here. Let's talk to the mapper. Let's find Matkina, maybe. Let's go to the killer directly. That spares us uh, the moment of being surprised, right? From a distance, it looks as if this mutant is wearing a form-fitting suit of finely patterned lines in white, yellow and pale blue. On closer examination, it becomes apparent that these are tattoos and they cover nearly the entirety of his body, even his shaved head. His actual clothes are simple and worn, and his boots look as though they've seen hard use. He's studying the meaningless swirls and walls on his arms and mouthing names that mean nothing to you. Solvi, Berlint, Urgau, Tentrees. When he looks up at you, you see that a strange device covers one of his eyes. A deep blue light shines in its center, and it seems to measure and evaluate you as he focuses on you. He smiles as you approach a broad, beaming grin that says he considers you a friend already. I'm Mapper, he says, extending his hand. Scanthal's a new face. New faces mean new places. I've been everywhere around here. I found my way into places long sealed and best forgotten, met all sorts of people, he frowns. Can't say I cared much for some of them, it's true. His voice is fast and incisive. Still I try. <laughs> the communities of our world are islands of light. Sometimes they wink out and sometimes they flare up. I want to link them together. I want to be a bridge. You say you want to be a bridge? How do you even do that? He shrugs, a faint smile on his lips. I travel, I see places, I map them out on my skin. And maybe inside me, I don't know. I mean, the lines change when I look. And they've got to be stored someplace, right? He scratches his bald head. The lines flow under his fingers. I just need to collect places. I need to know that I've done something. Making maps is all I know. It's all I want to know. Aha. Uh -huh. Where did you get all these tattoos? These, they are not tattoos, they are maps. Oh, that's all maps. He exposes a shiny green maps of places I've been or heard of. He covers the artificial eye with his hand and says, If I look at my skin like this, it is meaningless. And he uncovers it and says, But look at it like this, suddenly I see the map. Springing up off my skin, I focus on it. It all becomes clear, buildings, people, smells, even a route to get there. It's worthless to anyone else, of course, without me to interpret the map. It's a combination of my mutation and the lens. Finding the eyepiece was the best part of being born like this. He sighs contentedly. It made me feel like my life made sense at last. And that, my friend, is far more luck than anyone deserves. And where have you been? He laughs. It's probably easier to ask where I haven't been all over the Sega's protectorate. The oasis of Mra Jolios, Valley of Dead Heroes, Colm Village, the ruins of Arcopalasia and all around the Black Cube. Tower of Birds, where Thirdlos fell, even up past the clock of Kala to Vralk. As he speaks, the lines of his body shift and move, coming into prominence with the words. Every place was a treat, an experience, did you know most people never go more than 50 kilometers from the village of their birth, if that? I've been tremendously lucky, my friend. He smiles down at his maps. Then he looks back at you and says more quietly, if you plan to travel, I'd avoid the grasslands, though. The birds will take your meat for their meals. 
and your bones for their nests. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, have, have you heard anything about the murders down here, by the, by the way? Murders? What murders? Alarm colors his face, and a faint red streak runs through his tattoos. No one tells me anything. He sighs. One of the drawbacks of being a drifter, I suppose. No one thinks to keep you informed. Then he looks around. Of course, in a place like this, people don't generally talk to each other much anyway. Well, um... That's good for us. I'm looking for a woman named Matkina, by the way. Do you know where I can Probably find like her? That. Matkina, the White Death. I've heard of her. I know where she hides, too. He grins wide, exposing a mouthful of extraordinarily white and clean teeth. I can tell you where she is, but I hate to say it comes with a price. Much as I love to talk about my travels, I need to finish a patch of my Sega's Cliffs map. And I need bragging rights. For the next time I see the navigators, he shrugs. Also, she might not be happy, I've told. But I might be able to help you find it, for a trade, of course. He drops his voice. Have you ever heard of the Changing God? Savior of Sega's Cliffs in times past and so forth. They say he had a sanctuary under the city, a place he used to retreat to, and plan for the future while he thought on his past. You know, making possibility maps. That sanctuary is the more one important place I haven't seen in Sega's Cliffs, and I need it to fill in my map. As far as I can tell, it's not far past the Stichaler. The problem I'm having is that I just can't make any sense of their language. Maybe you can talk to them. <laughs> That's little price. He shrugs disarmingly. It's a hell of a price, I know, but there it is. You want to find Matkina, you'll find the sanctuary for me. And why don't you go look for the sanctuary yourself? Sucking Sticha, that's why. They've got their precious eggs in their lair and they won't let me in. It's not like I've got any interest in the eggs, but I, <laughs> I got no patience for dealing with their clicks and rumbles. I just want to know, got me? Uh, is there some other way into the sanctuary be besides the Sticha lair? He sighs, exasperated. There must be. Changing God wasn't the kind of person who did just put one entrance into the place. I haven't been able to find the back door for the life of me. All right, I'll be back when I've found the sanctuary. Travel well, my friend. Ah, and thank you for the info, dear mapper. Wow, we've got a lot to investigate. This murder, where Matkina is, and talk to her. That's going to be fun. And we also have to look at this strange pillar. With many green eyes. We'll do that in the next episode. Thank you for watching. Happy gaming to you and see you in the next episode of Torment. Tides of Luminera. Have a good time until then.